get in the car. Hi, I'm Carrie Kuhn. I'm Tracy Lutz. And we are coming to you from Chicago, where we have the great pleasure of welcoming our friends, uh, Kelly O'Sullivan and Alex Thompson, who um, wrote and directed the film St. Francis. Mm -hmm. And so many of our friends from Chicago are in it that we're delighted to get to be here to talk to them about the making of this movie. So let us introduce Alex and Kelly so they can tell you who's with us today. Hello. Thank you for being here. Carrie, you're already so good at this. <laughs> I'm so Just impressed. Killing it. I <laughs> wouldn't need a few takes of that. Um, what, why don't we go around the um, square? Who's, who all is here? Lily, do you want to start? Hi, I'm Lily Mojekwu, and I play Annie. Um, and I'm really psyched to be here. It's like to see everybody again. <laughs> Oh yeah, all of our, who's next? All of our boxes are different. How about Matt? Oh, Charin, yes. Oh, it's, uh, hello, my name is Charin Alvarez and I play Maya. How about Max? I'll go, hi, I'm Max Lipschitz. I play Jace in the film. Very happy to be here. It's great to have you, Max. Thank you. <laughs> Mary Beth? Hi, I'm Mary Beth Fisher. I play Kelly's mom. I don't even know if I have a name. <laughs> <laughs> it's Carol, I think. Okay, Carol. I play Carol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and last but not least, Ramona. Hi, I'm Ramona, and I play um, Francis in the movie. It's a memorable one. <laughs> that everybody? <clears throat> That's everybody. I think so. Uh, this movie is so fantastic. Uh, so uh, fantastic and, uh, and a surprise in, in the best way. A surprise for me any number of ways. I've known, Kelly, I've known you for a long time now. Uh, I've known you through Chicago theater. And uh, I, I didn't know you wrote and maybe the answer to, to this is you, you didn't prior to this, but I doubt that. My, my feeling upon watching it is that this is not just the first thing she ever wrote in her life. She must have been writing for some while before generating the script because the script feels so accomplished. And so I, I have to think you've been writing prior to this. So be before we get into a lot of the other stuff about the making of the film. I want to talk a little bit about the genesis of the movie and, and the, your origins as a writer. I had written a terrible web series before this in the heyday of web series, um, but that's about it. And other than that, this was the first thing that I wrote. And first of all, like I asked you to do this so that you had to say nice things about the movie um, because I just adore you and think you're so amazing. Um, so thank you. <laughs> But this was based on two real events in my life that I was actually an Annie and that I did actually have an abortion. And so I feel like I was able to write with specificity and authenticity about those two things and then fictionalize them from there. And did you did you sit down to write this thinking this is something I just need to get out into the world or did you sort of was the whole project kind of purpose built in your mind? I'm going to write a movie that then I'm going to make in Chicago for not a lot of money and I'm going to play this part. Did you have all that in mind as you were writing the thing? That was the dream. At first it was just like, I want to write a scene if I can just get that far. And then it sort of built from there. And as I was approaching a first draft, I thought, can we do this? And luckily Alex is my real life partner. And so I would turn to him on the couch and say, will you read this? Can we make this? And knowing that Chicago has this incredible bank of actors who I'm lucky enough to just have talent crushes on, I started 
you know, casting in my head very early on. I wrote these parts for Lily and Shadine and thought, God, if we can just get Mary Beth Fisher to play my mom, like that's true. <laughs> and literally was like, I've, I've been wanting this for years. How can I just work with these people? Um, so in a lot of ways, so much of this is just fantasy fulfillment, um, including this moment right now. So it was never a long, you know, it was very much moment by moment. What if I can con these people into saying yes? And all of you have been conned into this. <laughs> it was also very irresponsible for me to even suggest that it could be done. So I think the script was like just so good. There was not an option. It was part of your original idea always to, to marry the two stories from your real life into one into one narrative. That's right. And they had happened at different points, but I thought the juxtaposition was interesting. And... Alex, are you reading uh, as she's writing the piece or you're reading at the end of a, a draft? Yeah, no, I, I remember the first, I would read sort of scene by scene um, often. And I remember the first scene I read was the, the bloodhound scene, which was the original opening of the film. Uh -huh. And um, that's when I started to be quite worried about being the director for the film because it was, <laughs> it was just so specific and so... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was just so Kelly. I, I was like, well, I, I feel like Kelly is like one experience off of just being like, oh, I could do this. And I just kind of lucked into that like dip before she's, you know, she's going to be doing it on her own. <laughs> Max, is that why you did the movie? Because of the bloodhound scene? <laughs> yeah, I read the scene and I said, this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> Strike me as the type. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, honestly, I did. I, I loved reading the script and I you know, I thought the part would be um, very fun. You know, it felt very like it had a lot of life in it. And um, yeah, I was and excited. Did you to do it. improvise any of the lines or was it all as written? Yeah, I, there was a lot of improv actually. Um, I mean, we would, you know, stick to the script and then Alex would say, go wild with it. And then he would say, okay. Those well, exact <laughs> words, go wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, um, yeah, I got to, we got to improvise a, a little bit, yeah. I think we did the most with you, actually. That's Max. right. Yeah. Because we knew that you're such a good improviser and, and you were really great at, at loosening me up, too. Did you have a relationship? Had you guys worked together previously? No, um, not Kelly and I. Alex and I knew each other um, just from living in the same neighborhood. Yeah. I worked at a coffee shop that he used to go to and we were just kind of, you know, friends in the neighborhood. Yeah. And we, that actually, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Chase. You thought of him for the part because of that? Yeah. I actually staged, I, I have described it this way, Max, you told me this is wrong, but we were already auditioning for the role of Jace, but I wanted to really have some process with it and make sure it didn't feel like I was sort of, pushing this actor on the producers on the production. And so I actually went to Max's house. We, I directed a tape for him and then sent it to PR. And I was like, I, this, I got this tape. I think this guy's really good. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and all my yeah, I was at your part and everybody loved it. So it was, it was really ideal. We cast Max's apartment before we cast Max. <laughs> so that's his real apartment in the film and his real roommate. And so, the evolution yeah. is pretty funny. Scouting I think that guy was actually playing video games. It was very believable. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I, I dated that guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have. <laughs> it's very truthful. Um, Shireen and, and Lily, did you, were, were those straight offers for you? Or, and if, if so, what was it about the script that made you both feel you wanted to, to be in it? Um, they were. Um, it, for me, uh, we, we get a chance to do, um, I feel very fortunate because Kelly did a reading of it. Um, she wanted to hear it out loud. And um, uh, Lily and I were both part of that reading. Um, and I, after reading it, I, I, it was just, uh, it was the writing. That's why I wanted to be part of it. And it was also, um, my first time someone ever wrote in something with me in mind. Um, so I felt 
so so lucky and so blessed um, to have gotten this opportunity. But at the end of the day, it was it was the writing and the story um, that drew me. What about you, Lily? Um, I I actually discovered long after we shot the movie that the role was written with me in mind, which just it blows me away. Um, like Charin, I had been invited to do a reading and I've worked with Alex a couple of times. He's brought me along on a couple of projects, so grateful. And we even um, realized that we'd worked with each other way before, before we actually knew each other. Yeah. Um, but when I heard Kelly had written this script, I was like, Kelly O'Sullivan wants me to read this thing. I was like, I'm right there. And instantly just fell in love with the script and the process of writing. It was amazing to me because I, I don't have like a writer's bone at all, um, but I know good writing. And instantly I, I was like, this is a project I want to work with, work on and also get to work with Charine. <laughs> it's like, what, what is there to say no to? <laughs> so the, uh, Lily and I had worked together before and any opportunity, if you guys ever get a chance to work with Lily, I highly recommend it. Um, so I, I knew it was going to be it was going to be a good time, and we um, it was dare I say um, pretty easy. I felt it didn't it felt it felt as it probably as relaxed a set as um, it could ever be, and I think. It was because, um, first of all, because Kelly and, and, and Alex set the tone, you know, the ambiance. And also because I just love being around Lily. Um, and also because of this cutie pie, Ramona, mm -hmm. um, who I think it's fair to say that we all fell hard for her. I know I did. I was smitten on the first day. Um, Let's talk to Ramona about that. Ramona, bad kid acting can ruin a movie, and you're so great. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, tell us a little bit about the process you went through to get the part and what you thought about the movie when you read it. Um, I, I don't think I went to a reading, though. <laughs> But um, I remember when I got home, I said, I can't wait to be in my movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I found out I got the part. I'm like, yay! It very much is your movie. I mean, right. you share it with Kelly and everybody, but it's, it's, it's her. Movie, yeah. 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 Um, well, uh, it, I think it's fair to say that, I mean, the first thing you... In, a, in this film, it seems like the first thing you have to have is the script, which you did. And the second thing you have to have is that kid. I mean, it's yeah. a, it's a, right? It doesn't work if you don't have that kid. That's so right. tell me about finding Ramona. How'd you find her? We, we set a date. We were like, if we don't have Francis, which now I can't think of the two, Ramona and Francis, as they're the same to me. But I was like, if we can't find Ramona, by July, it was June fifth. June fifth, we won't start shooting on July sixth. That's how crazy we were. Wildly irresponsible. But we went through PR casting with Mickey and Jennifer and AJ, and we saw like 30, 30 girls. And AJ kept saying, "I have a really good feeling about this person. I have a really good feeling." And she'd shown us a few commercials that Ramona had done that were amazing and hilarious, and. Um, all improvised though. So, oh. you know, Ramona showed up and she was just a kind of force of, she was just lively and present. And Ramona, you like immediately started talking to us and uh, it was, you were five then. Do you remember that? Like, you I were, barely remember it. <laughs> you were like literally <laughs> this tall. And when you walked in, we were like, oh my gosh, that is. <laughs> A, that's a very young person. Um, yeah, it was just, it was kind of amazing. She had that, like, when you imagine people, when you like read about Elia Kazam, like meeting these actors, she had that like naturalism with none of the, um, I don't know, she hadn't been overcoached. She hadn't been, her, her parents are amazing. And I don't know. Yeah. And almost, I think almost a hundred percent of her lines in the movie are scripted. And that speaks to her talent. 
because I think so many people think her lines are improvised and she's just able to deliver them with such naturalism and, and so organically and she's amazing. So how did you go about building s some of the relationships? Because I, a low budget movie, you don't have time for any serious rehearsals. So uh, uh, time or money, I should say, for any serious rehearsals. So how did you go about building some of those relationships? Because the family unit's really important to the thing. Yeah, like did you, had you and Mary Beth worked together before? By the way, Chicago's own Mary Beth Fisher, it's it's always really fortunate that you get to have someone like that playing a nameless oh, mother. Man. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Mary God. <laughs> oh, that I purposely did not look at the cast list because it's like playing Chicago theater bingo and it was such a- <laughs> 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 Rebecca Buller on the phone. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You want us to do um, you know, some of that, your relationship with Kelly and and Alex and, and in the film? Me? Yeah. Uh, well, Kelly called me or emailed me. I can't remember which. I think it might have been an email. Email. I'm too scared. Say, to um, I wrote this movie and would you consider playing my mom? And Kelly and I did the famous Bob Falls Seagull. And that's how we really got to know each other. She played this kick-ass Masha. And um, I just totally fell in love with Kelly doing that show. And so it, it, she could have asked me, you know, to go blast off to some unknown planet and I would have done it for her. It's like, you know, Kelly's so good. But then, of course, I opened the, the script and read it and went, wait, what? And I thought, what, Kelly can write? Like, when did Kelly start writing? I was like, with you, Tracy, I was like, I didn't know Kelly could write. And so, um, and then I found out, of course, that the famous Fran Guinan was going to be the dad. And it was like, well, how can you not walk around Starved Rock State Park with Fran Guinan for an entire day and um, have a sandwich for lunch and hang out with Kelly? And I didn't even know Alex at all. I got to the set and I remember saying to Kelly, is that your boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately became the mom. Oh my God. That's lovely. That's a lovely detail. <laughs> and that whole day, Fran and Mary Beth were carrying C stands up and down. <laughs> the they, they weren't supposed to, but somebody gave them to them. And I will never forget myself. <laughs> In case anyone who's not from Chicago is watching this and you're wondering if all of this lovey doveyness is put on it's absolutely not it's just a really close community and what you're seeing is real and we we did play that game of bingo and and i won i have to say because like i was like laura fisher she got cut out i can tell you she got cut out in the that's, movie. Right. But that's, laura fisher. that's right yeah she was so good too. she played donna donna flirting with jim yeah oh and jim's so cringy oh jim i wish he were here he's so i know he's so, so people See that he's not really like that. <laughs> I know. What a good reputation. He's the opposite of that. That's why he's so good. Is you just like love him and feel his warmth, and then he gets so gross and so creepy. Um, I think he liked playing kind of a jerk. There was a moment at South by where someone in the audience was like, "How was it playing the asshole?" And Jim was like. I didn't know I was playing the asshole, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's just a testament to his like. Empathy as an actor, I was like, oh. that's amazing. Uh, how did you, how'd you get it made? It's a good question. Hope and a prayer. No, um, I mean, it, it's we, I come from a theater background and a like, I met Lily being like a production assistant on Mind Games, right? Is mm -hmm. that right? Oh <laughs> that's it. Gosh. And so I had this like very close relationship to scheduling and process with like those like table work and you know, so we'd, we'd done all this table work and it really became, can we do it in 12 hours a day for X number of days? We pulled a lot of favors. We, we just basically put zeros on the budget everywhere we could. Like, let's just not pay for locations and see what we get. Let's just not pay for a camera and see what we get. And um, I, I just, it was just amazing. And we shot so fast most of the time. Um, which was which was fun. It meant we got to shoot more in some ways than, than we would have. But um, no, I think I think we just created a, a set where experimentation was okay and 
a looseness was sort of embraced. I don't know. I don't want to speak for, for you all. You were there. I was nodding. Everyone I was, is nodding along with this observation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it was, it, I think sometimes it's like when you, if you can get the right engine, the car goes, you know? Uh, so, um, I mean, we doubled our initial budget, but that's still pretty small. Uh, it's, How long was the shoot? 22 days. Wow. Uh, yeah. And the, the very first scene was the very last thing we shot with Brad Smith. Um, oh. Sad Brad. Sad, Sad Brad. Brad. Sad Brad. <laughs> he plays two parts in the movie. Did you see that? <laughs> oh, no. I didn't. He mops the floor in um, the restaurant shortly after he plays oh. a different character. <laughs> Double duty for Sad Brad. Oh, <laughs> right. yeah. Brad. That's sad. He's playing two parts. <laughs> <That's> sad. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so, what, what we'd like to hear everybody else talk about what the process was like for them. I know we heard um, Shadine talked a little bit about that, but um, how did you guys feel being on set? You know, and and how did you work with with Alex? Well, I have to say, listening to Alex and Kelly talking about how. Um, the time pressure they were under and how quickly they were doing it, you would never have known that they felt the least bit of stress in, in my opinion, I got there and, you know, granted I was walking the trails of starved rock all day long, but it was like, it was so chill that I almost didn't know we were doing anything. Hmm. Um, we were walking around all day long, yakking and talking and laughing and making fun of Fran Guinan. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure he was making fun of me. And, uh, you know, it was just so, it was just relaxed. It was just like hanging out with friends for a day. And I was completely unaware of um, any stress that was going on with the camera people, the sound people, any of that. There was like, there was just zero stress. Hmm. And Charine and Lily, you guys had a lot of really intense stuff to do. How was that like for you? It was, you, you know what they did that was really lovely on our first day? Um, uh, first day of shoot. Um, it, it was, part, uh, we were all figuring out, figuring out the, you know, the, the tone and stuff. And um, I think uh, Alex said, gave us permission to improvise. Um, so we went off the rails, um, but it was so much fun. And I think we, no, uh, but at the, but so funny. So there was a lot of improvisation, um, but it, it, when we would do it again, we would always go back to the script. But the, the great thing I think about the improvising, and I don't know uh, if you share this Lily and, um, uh, and uh, um, that it gave us a lot of backstory because there was a lot of improvising. Um, and I think it helped us kind of get in the groove of what the, what the relationship was gonna be. Um, so I think it really helped us and um, it was fun. <laughs> it was just a lot of fun. And it also, at least for me, realized that, that what Kelly wrote and, and, and uh, was far better than what we were improvising. <laughs> but it was good backstory for us. Um, but it was fun. It was just fun. Um, uh, and it was just a lot of giggles, a lot of, um, a, a lot of discoveries, I think. But oh, the fighting really? was fun. You know, the beauty about fighting is that you're friends after. <laughs> There's no residual. <laughs> right. That's why actors are so healthy, because we get to do that. <laughs> so much fun getting it all out and all that stuff, because at the end of the day, you know, you get to be friends and, and um, you know, uh, in, in enjoy, go back to how it was before. So it's, it's those, um, um, those scenes are always um, a lot of fun to play. Lily, did you have fun too, Lily, doing that? I did have fun. I did have a tremendous amount of fun. Um, I just, I want to just speak about Ramona a little bit, just love on her because she, just having her in scenes, it just reminded you how to inhabit a scene authentically and like truthfully, like instantly you were like, oh yeah, that's, that's what we're going for. And it just brought you back <laughs> to that um, over and over again, which was amazing. 
Um, and also, I just feel like in terms of the set, there was a great amount of freedom that you felt to experiment. Um, as Charine was saying, the script was so rock solid that, that you were working from like a beautiful, beautiful place. But in terms of having actors that I already respect and trust and love and want to work with, and then just being in an environment where you could experiment, I... Um, tried something kind of different for myself in terms of process. And I felt okay doing that because of the, because of the environment that we were in. Um, I sort of, most of the stuff I shot was sequential. So I was able to, for Annie, um, take advantage of the fact that things were happening in her story that I was not privy to. And from her perspective, that was, that paralleled what was happening in her life. So every time I would come on set, like the relationships would actually have forward they would they would be a little bit stronger and I'm talking like the personal relationships mm -hmm. and it was a choice of mine I talked with Kelly about it briefly I was like I think I'm not going to try to make up the difference and see what that feels like to sort of be on the outside at times um but I think that was only actually possible because I I knew I was loved and I loved everybody right back and there was a tremendous amount of trust so for me by the time you know we get to that one crucial scene with Annie that was all of that building up just kind of being able to again, watch those relationships just like for, go further and further and me not be a part of it, especially watching Ramona fall in love with Charin, which happened like on day one. And I was like, I want in. <laughs> <laughs> but I did get <laughs> Pardon me? Did you shoot an order? I, I happened to, like, I was lucky to, I know, I know that doesn't always happen, but it was actually sort of a, uh, just fortunate for me. And then I was able to sort of, you know, in, from the narrative standpoint, just go in sequence. Mm -hmm. Ramona, is this your favorite um, project you've done so far? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My newest one was Chicago PD. Was that pretty fun? <laughs> um, it's the newest thing that I've done. Oh. You probably got paid better on that one too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Did you get to be a police officer? What was, what were you doing on that? Are you allowed to tell us? Oh, you might not be. <laughs> don't, well, don't, worry don't worry about it, don't worry about it. <laughs> Kayla's completely different from Francis. That's true, oh. I'm sure. Well, she's a delight. And then- Ramona have... gives, can I say something about Ramona? Ramona gives the best hugs. <laughs> <laughs> It was, <laughs> didn't we all look forward to getting a hug from Ramona? Yeah, just get the little hat on your resume, Ramona. <laughs> that should be on your resume, hun. Good hug. <laughs> Max, do you get hugs? And what I mean by that is um, because you have a, a background in improv, and I know that, Kelly, that you've done a lot of that. I mean, we all came up doing those commercial auditions in Chicago, and they were all improv-based because they assumed all of us had gone through That's Second right. City and I.O. and all of that stuff. So did you guys find it was really easy to find a rapport because you had that background in common? I, yeah, I felt like our, the rapport came rather quickly with Kelly and I. Um, you know, we were shooting a lot in my actual apartment, like you said. And so for me, it was very natural. Um, we were shooting in our apartment bed, too. And in your apartment. So, you know, felt... Um, it was really weird though, I have to say, like that during the, um, Ramona earmuffs for a second, during the sex scene that we had, Alex would be like, I just think you need to move, the, we can see too much of the pasties. And it was very bizarre to be like in our bed that we share. And Alex is so technically directing that scene. It was just a moment of being like, and I wrote this, like, it's just. And I was trying really hard to just stay out of, get out of the way, you know. But I, I mean, Max is so instantly warm and lovable. It's why he's great in this role. So I, I really love working with we him. We did not have him on our Chicago theater bingo card. And I, I turned to him, I turned to Carrie after the first scene and was like, who was that charming bastard? Yeah, I Why mean, what, I a, <laughs> what a winning presence, truly. <laughs> I mean, it was it really just, just slipped right in there. Um, Alex and Kelly, are you guys going to do this again? Yeah. We are, yeah. yeah. Our relationship survived the first time. <laughs> so we're going to turn the heat up and co-direct the next oh. one. Wow. Just really push it to the brink. Yeah. Is it's it coming brink. up soon? Is that something you can talk about or are you keeping it close? we're we're still like we're still 
financing it and packaging it and trying to figure out who cares about it and who wants to help get it made. So, um, so the, the script's called Mouse and it's amazing. It's Kelly's script. Um, it's amazing. It's called what again? Mouse. Like, like, a, the, like City Mouse, Country Mouse. Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Great, great <laughs> title when somebody has to go, what is it called? <laughs> City Mouse, Country Mouse. Uh, that's how you know it needs to change. No, no. <laughs> it was just a computer moment, goddamn. <laughs> I can't hear what you Playing a person on Q&A. Uh, I, I feel like... Um, I, is there something that you guys want to talk about that you think would be interesting? There's to something people? I want oh, to mind. talk about <laughs> because we have to talk about it. And I don't know a good way to talk about it, but, and I don't have anything brilliant to say about it, but the truth is that one, one of the very impactful things about this film is that it is by a woman and about women and the women are front and center uh, from beginning to end. And the movie though it has likable and interesting uh, male characters, it never it never wanders down their path too far. It's never about, it keeps coming back to the women. And it's such a, it's so great. It's, it's so great to see. It's unfortunately still too rare. It's rare enough that we still have to talk about it, That's right. uh, but it's really great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was that was the goal um, was to really be realistic and graphic in the nature that it explores womanhood and, and mothering and not mothering and, and to sort of like slip in all the messaging in a way that hopefully you don't feel it, um, that it's just baked in there. And then at the end, you're sort of like, oh, wow. Yeah, like the tropes are reversed. She has, you know, the Bechdel test is like two men don't really talk to each other. Um, and to not have that feel preachy or like it's trying, trying to teach a lesson, but just have it feel real. Mm -hmm. Just have it feel like, why aren't there a hell of a lot more examples of this? Yeah. Why, why is this rare? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alex, how, how conscious are you of that going into that? I'm very conscious. I mean, very, very conscious of the, just what we all think of as the expected tropes, right? That, that you know, we, we had a very nice group of investors who nevertheless had some notes. And, you know, often the notes would be like, whatever, what happens to Jace? Why don't we pick back up? You know, don't we want to figure out what this romance ends up with? And in sort of having to contend with like, you know, Max made it really hard because Max was so, I mean, I think we can all agree, incredible to watch and just like so lovable that even I was like, do we need another scene with Max? We even <laughs> talked about bringing him in for reshoots. And I was and, saying, do we need another scene with Max? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Max was that. But, but it was a great test because we were like, no, that the story isn't really about that. You know, Max is the, Max is like the character in another film that would have been directed by a man that, uh, Max is Midge in Vertigo, right? It, who we all would have liked more of, but because this was directed by a man, this woman is sort of relegated. Um, but I think it's, I don't know, I think it's structurally sound as well as being politically brave and futuristic in its representation. I think it's just awesome. Um, and I was very aboard. Um, would have been stupid not to be. Right. Uh, mm hmm yeah, as a recovering Catholic, I have to say, you okay. nailed the feminist agnostic in all of us, <laughs> you know? I just, it was, it was so gratifying as a woman to see some of that stuff talked about in the way that it was. And again, it's sad that it's refreshing. Yeah, 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 it is so funny because as I was writing it, I was like, oh yeah, I don't think I've seen the bloodhound scene. Like, I don't think I've seen it, even though it's a very common interaction in real life. I don't think I've seen that and it was interesting to sort of think about okay well what haven't we seen and and to think about you know I didn't know that a medication abortion abortion existed before I had one I assumed that it had to be surgical and so it was a real decision to say let's watch her put those pills in her cheeks and and then they dissolve and to get really really intentional about the things that we show um because I do think people learn from movies and learn how to feel about things and 
And so we wanted to have um, great intention about that. I, I, I think too, one of the really subtle moments I recall t- is watching that scene with Rebecca Spence where she's so great. I mean, she's really great as that shaming woman with a belief system. And to have her come back at the end at the school was really interesting to me because there isn't some big comeuppance, right? There isn't some big thaw that happens. We do get the triumphant scene in the park, which, you know, which we needed, that we need that win for the character. And um, I just really love the subtlety of seeing her come back and just a look, you know, it's just, it gives the sense of these um, relationships continuing beyond the movie, this community continuing past the film. And I thought that was, it just adds to the richness of the environment. That's right. Yeah. That we're going to see each other. I think about that all the time. Anytime I cut somebody off in traffic, I'm like, Jesus, I might see that person, you know, that we don't exist in a vacuum that we're all going to have to interact and, and yeah, I, I like to just this isn't any this is really a for Kelly, a, like a whoa, well, great job, Kelly. Um, but I love at the very end that like what like Ramona, you know, we end with you in the sea of children and all those children have parents, you know, and all those th- th- there are all these families out there who are all dealing with this stuff. I mean, I know we don't end there, but I always love that just seeing all those kids suddenly and being like, whoa. Um, they, they all have lives that are like these lives we've been watching. Yeah. Again, not, not building myself up very much, Kelly, uh, <laughs> but. You know. Somebody build up Alex. <laughs> yeah, you're amazing. He did such a good job director and had a lot of, um, was so open about being like, I'm scared of directing this because I'm a man. Yeah. Um, and the conversations that we had surrounding that and, and why he was the right person for that job. And, and all of his intention talking about how Ashby is a really significant touchstone and, and really wanting to ground it because I think the script can so- sometimes border on um, saccharine or absurd at moments. And he every time was like dedicated to grounding it so that it never gets to that point. So I think he did amazing. And Kelly, did you, um, did you find that when you were on set, you were just primarily wearing your actor hat or did you step in as the writer with notes about tone or a a way a scene was going? Occasionally I would step in and say something, but for the most part, Ramona and I were hanging out. Um, We spent a lot of the day together, which was so fun and also put me in that headspace of being a nanny again where um, in between takes, we would develop rituals and games. And she'd be like, "Um, let's go hang out with those ants over there. And so then I would go and do that with her. So that was a lovely part of it. Yeah. Well, your performance is really beautiful. And I mean, I've lost roles to you in Chicago. So I knew you were (laughs) (laughs) going to That was their best. But it was, I've always admired you as an actor and I just think your work in the film is really extraordinary and it it is grounded and it makes, it it feels like that, you know, that Chicago thing where it's about telling the story. It's not about some aria that someone is taking on. And um, it's just really, it was really moving to us to see you. Thank you so much. And and I just want to say for anybody who's watching Carrie Coon in the nest (laughs) <laughs> honest to God, you have to watch it. It's incredible. Yes. Every time I think you're going to make one choice, you make a different one and it feels more true than what I could have expected. You're just unbelievable. Kelly's only saying that because we're not in the same category for the Gotham Award. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, so yeah, you're, you're in the, the big girl actor category. You're in the Oprah <laughs> Francis McDormand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Where can one see the nest? Where can we see the nest? Well, you can go to nestmovie.com and stream. Nestmovie.com. I think I probably checked that out, but I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, You're all superb and uh, congratulations on making just a really, really superb film. Uh, It's really impressive and impressive work. We were really delighted to watch it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. I wish we were all gathered in a theater together, uh, any kind of theater together rather than this virtual world. But we'll take it. uh, Light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, But anyway, congrats to everybody. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.